Today we will be going over how to create flaps and airfoil shapes in XFLR5. First you want to create a new project and go to Module Direct Foil Design. Create a foil, the NACA foil 2412. Save that. It is important to know what each of the numbers in 2412 represents. The first digit, the first two, represents how curved the center line is, which you can see pictured here. The higher the number is, the greater the curvature will be. The second digit, the four, represents the location of the center line's maximum displacement from the center. As you can see at 0 0.4, this is where the center line reaches its highest. The 12 represents the thickness of the airfoil as a percentage of its cord. Since it is a 12, the maximum thickness will be 12% of its cord length. You can right click on the airfoil at the bottom and go to set flap, check the TE flap box, and then type in the numbers to create a flap. We usually will go with a 30% angle and 70% cord. The flap angle controls the angle of the flap relative to the flat line. A positive angle will go down and a negative angle will angle the flap upwards. The hinge X position controls how much of the airfoil is dedicated to the flap. At 70%, 30% of the length will go to the flap. And at 60%, 40% will be dedicated to the flap but 70% is a good general measure. So save that, and then name it NACA 2412, 30 degrees down. You can then repeat the step with a negative angle and change the name to 30 degrees up. You can also change the style and color of the airfoils so that they are more visually distinct from each other. The colors chosen here will also affect the colors in the XFOIL Direct Analysis tab when we learn how to use that later on. Today we'll be going off a predetermined set of numbers for the planes sizing. So go to plane to find a new plane. So for now, we will just be creating a basic model of a plane and setting it, the numbers to what we see here. It has a half span of 0 0.8 meters, a root chord of 0.35 meters, a tip chord of 0.26 meters, and an offset of 0.09 meters. And we'll use the 20, NACA 2412 airfoil shape. And no dihedral angle. So save that, and then define the elevator with a NACA. We need to go back and create a NACA 0010. And define the foil to be NACA 0010. Change the color to blue. Um, we're not going to worry much about the elevator sizing for today because we will be focusing on creating the flaps on the wings only. For the elevator section, usually the entire elevator can be devoted to flaps, so it's much easier to create that shape. So save that, and then you can also rename it as basic model. And once you have that all defined,
you can then right click on the plane here and go to duplicate and then name it flaps down and that will create this plane here which we can then edit to have the flaps using design type number one on this Excel sheet. So as you can see, we will need six different plane sections for the wing in order to create this shape. So just right click on the numbers and do insert after until you have six. And then edit the numbers to match up. The first section here, with the 0 0.051 numbers creates some space at the near the tip near the core near the root of the wings so that the flaps will not bump into the fuselage of the plane and since the wings taper across as we go each of the cords needs to be adjusted to match up with what it should be in order to create a straight line and the offsets need to be adjusted as well. After you have the Y's cords and offsets set, you can go over to the foils and set them accordingly. As you can see for this one, only three and four are set to the NACA 2412 with the flaps down. And so we set that. And as you can see here, we have a plain design with just the flaps set here. The aileron sections and at the root are flat and normal. So we can save that. And now we can create a model with just the ailerons down. So change this box to number two, and then make a duplicate of the basic model again. Name it, I will name it ailerons only for this. Um, right click current plane, edit, define, and then repeat the steps with the four different sections. Since this design does not need to readjust at the end to sort of create the space for the flaps and then the ailerons at the end, you only need four sections to describe the shape. So this is what the aileron, both ailerons being up looks like. So save that. And if you want to to create one with both ailerons and flaps, the easiest way to do that is to duplicate the flaps down model. And then edit the wings so that the final foil type is modeled off after the ailerons. You can then adjust the plane further by unchecking the symmetric box and adjusting the left and right sides separately. For example, if you wanted both the flaps to be up, you could then, or if you wanted to keep the flaps down, but you wanted the aileron on the left side to just be normal and flat, you could then go to the left side and change the foil type back to a regular NACA 2412. And so this would be an example of if you wanted your plane to generate a lot of lift, so you turn the flaps downwards, and you wanted to turn to the right, so you put your right aileron up.
and that is what that looks like. So that is all for today on how to create airfoil shapes and use the flap designer in XFLR. Have a good day.